birth control and abortion are turning out to be the great eugenic advances of our time. Frederick Osborne, founding member of the American Eugenics Society, 1973. The best way to hate a nigger is to hate him before he is born. Leander Perez, Louisiana State Judge, 1970. Two years after the director of Iowa Planned Parenthood had publicly attacked the state's eugenics board for not approving enough sterilizations, a bill was introduced in the Iowa legislature to legalize abortion. Despite having the support of both the state Republican Party and the state Democratic Party, as well as strong backing from the governor, the bill would be defeated almost single-handedly by the only African American in the Iowa legislature. Proponents have argued this bill is for blacks and the poor who want abortions and can't afford one. This is the phoniest and most preposterous argument of all. I represent the inner city where the majority of blacks and poor live, and I challenge anyone here to show me a waiting line of either blacks or poor whites who are wanting an abortion. Iowa State Representative June Franklin, Democrat, 1971. From the beginning, it was obvious that racism was the driving force behind the eugenics movement. While it was true that from time to time these elitist and social engineers would toss a few lower class whites in among the feeble minded and worthless who should be bred out of society, it was also true that they never seemed to include blacks among the best and the brightest who should be bred in. And at the same time, the country was being saturated with calls for population control and family planning. The facilities to carry them out were pouring into the black community. After all, no one was suggesting that there were too many white people in the world. And realities like those did not go unnoticed by early civil rights activists. For them, the reason birth control and abortion were being pushed was not a secret. Those whom we could not get rid of in the rice paddies of Vietnam we now propose to exterminate, if necessary, eliminate, if possible, in the OB wards and gynecology clinics of our urban hospitals. Jesse Jackson, 1971. Black people are the target of birth control, not because the ruling politicians like them and care about their economic equality, but because they hate them and can no longer use them in plantations and other cheap labor conditions. Muhammad Speaks, the Black Muslim Newspaper, 1970. I believe the entire question of abortions is just one more in the continuous series of events to eliminate the black population. Father George Clemens, Jet Magazine, 1973. The abortion law hides behind the guise of helping women, when in reality it will attempt to destroy our people. Brenda Heisen, New York Chapter, Black Panther Party, July 1970. The racist tells you to take birth control pills to kill, to murder life that might have existed if you had not. They are planning mass extermination of people they consider dispensable. Van Keys, Oakland Chapter, Black Panther Party, 1969. A true revolutionary cares about the people. He cares to the point that he is willing to put his life on the line to help the masses of poor and oppressed people. He would never think of killing his unborn child. Detroit chapter, Black Panther Party, 1970. Who the hell is getting the pill? The Mexican and the Negro. Do you want to wipe us out? Cesar Chavez, 1967. On the day after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, a memorial service was held at Howard University in Washington, D.C. As mourners left the auditorium, they encountered about 600 people attending a rally outside. Several speakers were heard warning the crowd that population control was being used as a weapon of black genocide. Among the speakers who gave this warning was noted civil rights activist Stokely Carmichael. A year later, Pittsburgh police were called when 200 sticks of dynamite were discovered near a local Catholic church. An investigation revealed that the dynamite was not intended for the church, but was instead left behind by civil rights activist William Bowie Hayden. Hayden later admitted that he and his group, the United Movement for Progress, had planned to use the explosives to blow up nearby Planned Parenthood facilities because they were practicing black genocide. 
Hayden had once stated that any African American who supported allowing Planned Parenthood into black neighborhoods was an Uncle Tom. Into the black community stepped Planned Parenthood, only when they came into the black community, they've become planned black genocide. William Bowie Hayden, civil rights activist, 1971. Among those associated with Hayden was an African-American physician named Dr. Charles Greenlee. Greenlee had been a staunch supporter of Planned Parenthood, but became suspicious of the organization after noticing that black neighborhoods in his city were, as he described it, saturated with Planned Parenthood facilities, while nearby white neighborhoods that were just as poor did not have a single one. In an article published by the black Muslim newspaper, Mohammed Speaks, Greenlee said he had also discovered that deceptive materials were being circulated in the ghettos and delivered to the homes of black women, warning them that welfare recipients who had additional children would lose their public assistance. Greenlee knew that wasn't true and concluded that Planned Parenthood was pushing a hidden agenda. It was then he severed his ties to the organization and started working against it. The idea is to make less niggas so they won't have to build houses for them. If we keep producing, they're either gonna have to kill us or grant us full citizenship. Dr. Charles Greenlee, civil rights activist, 1968. It is strange that they chose to start talking about population control at the same time that black people in America and people of color around the world are demanding their rightful place as human citizens and their rightful share of the material wealth in the world. Jesse Jackson, 1977. It is interesting how everyone assumes that the pro-life movement in America began in 1973 with Roe versus Wade. But we who were around during the civil rights movement and struggle of the 1960s, we know that the first anti-abortion groups were organizations like the Black Panthers, the Nation of Islam, and other community organizations. These folks were speaking out against both birth control and abortion long before the contemporary pro-life groups of today existed. But one of the problems with the civil rights movement was that there was far too many men and women who were willing to sell out the community. And a lot of powerful, influential African Americans knew that they had to be willing to turn and look the other way in order to advance their own personal political agendas. In 1972, those members of the Congressional Black Caucus, such as Charles Diggs, did not trust the abortion industry or those who were espousing uh, population control or family health, and they were suspicious of them. But when the money began to flow, uh, just as it was with Jesse Jackson, when he found out that indeed he could get funding and monies to run for presidents from these people, uh, he flip-flopped in his position because he once said abortion is black genocide. What happens to a mind of a person in the moral fabric of a nation that can abort a baby without a pang of conscience? Where will we be 20 years from today? But when Reverend Jesse Jackson realized he needed money to run for president, all of a sudden the most important civil rights issue is a woman's right to choose. In 1975, Jesse Jackson called for the ban of abortion through a constitutional amendment. And in an interview in Jet Magazine, he referred to abortion as genocide. But Jesse Jackson, on the other hand, wanted to become president. And the Democratic Party at that time had sold out completely to Planned Parenthood and the eugenics crowd. And Jesse Jackson went along to get along. And don't ever think that he is the only one. The unfortunate thing we face, whether we're talking about individuals or organization, there's never been a shortage of black leaders who are willing to sell us down the river if it's enough money and political power in it for them. I've been grappling with the fact that the NAACP is in bed with the very organization that has brought black, geno black genocide to our community. Dr. Alveda King, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, has tried on at least three occasions to bring to this organization's attention the black genocidal plot of people like Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood to exterminate the black community. And the stonewalling has been astounding. Alveda King literally has gone to the street along with myself to say to the NAACP, please deal with this issue of black genocide. The NAACP has responded by 
hiding and trying to prevent their convention goers to hear about black genocide. They've even gone to the extent of using buses to block our demonstration about black genocide in front of Kobo Hall where the, their convention was going on. They have literally put black paper across their windows so that the convention goers at the NAACP convention could not see the demonstration going outside that included Alveda King. There is definitely a conspiratorial plot being hatched and has been hatched by the NAACP to keep from their people the fact that they are co-conspirators in the genocide of their own people.